Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of the Tin Dog Podcast. In this episode, I'll be talking about Patrick Troughton's time as the Doctor from 1966 to 1969. Now, Patrick Troughton was playing the second Doctor, as you're probably more than aware. And again, we're looking at a black and white era. Now, unfortunately, in a podcast dedicated to recommending stories to people, there is a slight issue. As you're aware from the last podcast, most of the episodes, not most, some of the episodes of the Second Doctor's Time are missing. Now, let me explain how this works to some people. Douglas Adams um, had this game called Brocky and Ultra Cricket in the Hitchhiker's Guide to Galaxy. And one of the descriptions on how to play Brocky and Ultra Cricket, or rather experience it, is to have the team of Brocky and Ultra Cricket players behind a large wall. Now, this was so that the audience couldn't see what was going on. If the audience couldn't see what was going on, they then convinced themselves that they'd missed the world's greatest sporting event, rather than just a reasonably dull episode. Now, you can see where I'm going, can't you? As a lot of the episodes are missing, a lot of fans have got it into their head that these missing episodes are fabulously classic stories. An example I used to describe this is the Tomb of the Cybermen. Now, Tomb of the Cybermen was missing for a very very long time. Amongst fans, it had developed an enormous following and everyone was saying it was one of the greatest stories ever written, ever made, mainly because they were concentrating on memories of their childhood. And then in the early 90s, the story to the Simon was found and then promptly released onto uh, VHS, the lovely format of the time. And of course, we then got to see Tomb of the Cybermen. And it was admittedly a good story. It's actually one I would recommend, but it's not Fabulous. It's not the greatest story ever told. That's a whole different podcast. But the um, the story for Tomb of the Cybermen is very, very good. But it does show up. What about these other stories? These missing tales? Are they as good as everyone makes out? Or are they just good? Well, we'll never really know unless, of course, they turn up. We do all live in hope. The BBC did offer anyone um, a gift in exchange for a found episode of Doctor Who, a Dalek, which would be very, very nice. They are worth about a grand and a half each. Now, if if you were a Doctor Who fan, and you had an episode, you really would have handed it in, just for the kudos, not for a Dalek. But then again, who wouldn't want a Dalek? Right, let's look at some stories. Now, the first Second Doctor story, although strictly speaking it's the last heart and all, is the Tenth Planet. Now, the Cybermen are looking a little bit ropey in this story, but it is worth seeing just for the regeneration sequence. However, the regeneration sequence is all that really survived. Power of the Daleks is the first official Second Doctor story. Now, Power of the Daleks um, is missing, so we can't really talk about that because I've just not seen it. Again, with the Highlanders. Now, the Highlanders is Jamie McCrimmon's first ever story. Of course, Jamie McCrimmon, uh, known to the English listeners, as um, also the actor who played uh, Joe Sugden in Emmerdale Farm. Um, He is an extremely good actor and a very good personality. If you get a chance to see him at a convention, I would definitely pop along and listen to some of his stories about his time and his relationship with Patrick Troughton. Again, Underwater Menace. And then the next story after that is Moonbase. Now, Moonbase is a few episodes surviving, again, on the recommended Lost in Time DVD. The Macra Terra, which I believe is also missing, and uh, The Faceless Ones. There's, uh, I believe, a couple of episodes of that, again, on the Lost in Town time disc. You are beginning to see a bit of a theme. I would recommend, for a taster, definitely picking up those discs. Uh, the Faceless Ones is quite a nice story from what I've seen of it. It involves a sort of invasion via replication on at Heathrow Airport. It's kind of like an early unit story because it takes place on Earth, but of course unit doesn't exist. Unit we'll deal with later on in this podcast. Ah, now, I didn't actually say that the moon base, although it contains the Cybermen as the villain, um, it has completely redesigned Cybermen, much more identifiable as what they are these days. The moon base, and then later on, uh, Tomb of the Cybermen, uh, both contain very evolved-looking Cybermen. Now, of course, I've already mentioned the Tomb of the Cybermen in 
the earlier part of the podcast. Um, but again, I would recommend that. Again, after that, we've got The Missing Abominable Snowman. And then The Ice Warriors. Now, The Ice Warriors was released on VHS just towards the end of the VHS releases. And you got a CD with a soundtrack. It was a very nice boxed set, uh, which would be nice if you found it on eBay. Would say it's well worth a look. Then, of course, The Enemy of the World. Now, there is this theory that was put forward many years ago that a TV show has a set, a finite number of ideas and it should be cancelled the moment that somebody comes up with the idea of, hey, why don't we have the main actor playing two parts, a sort of villain and the good guy? This has happened in Murder, She Wrote and lots of other things. Now, this is the example of the second Doctor doing that. Troughton puts in a very fine performance as two parts, plays the Doctor, and the villain in this story. However, there is an argument that this was the point that Doctor Who could have been cancelled if you follow that argument through. Of course, then you've got the Web of Fear, which is the second appearance of the Yeti, the Abominable Snowman. The Yeti are controlled by the Great Intelligence. It's slightly complicated. You've got Fury of the Deep and Wheel in Space. Now, then reaches some surviving stories, things that I could actually recommend. We have the Dominators, which is nowhere near as rude as it sounds, although it does have some very odd-looking costumes. The Mind Robbers. Now, The Mind Robbers is one of those surreal stories. Well, it's one of those stories that people apply the word surreal to. But it's actually quite a well-thought-out thing. It's um, very of its time of the 60s, and, of course, it does fill on the budgetary side. But for the ideas and for the storyline and for the acting, it's very good. Now, in this story, the actor who plays Jamie McCrimmon was ill, uh, I believe with uh, mumps or, or something along those lines, and he was unavailable for one story. So Jamie McCrimmon's actually played by somebody else for this one episode. Now, I know some people in America are very used to that sort of thing going on, but in England, that was very odd. After the mind robber comes the invasion. Now, episodes one and three of the invasion were missing, but they've been recently recreated by Cosgrove Hall using flash animation. Now, it's gone down extremely well, this DVD release, because you get to see the episode. However, as a fan of animation, I wasn't that impressed with it. And I know I should have been. I really wanted this to be a great story. But, again, it's a seven-parter. It goes on for days. Uh, The Cybermen look fabulous. There is a bit of a Cyberman theme to the second Doctor's time which could explain why this third Doctor never gets to meet the Cybermen at all. But the invasion is a great story, and the DVD is fabulous. But the animation, for me, doesn't work. Obviously, I would like animation. Hell, I would love an animated Doctor Who series. But for this, I would rather they didn't use Flash. I'd want them to use something better, like classical animation style. The Crotons. Now, there is an argument that the Crotons is, in fact, an allegory for the current educational system in England. I couldn't possibly comment, but some people do feel like that. And if you keep that in the back of your mind, i.e. we must wipe out the intelligent kids in the class, some people, well, you know, it gets a laugh. Again, the Seeds of Death. Now that's another Ice Warrior tale. The Ice Warriors earlier on were played by Bernard Breslau, and for the English listeners, they'll know the name. They'll know him as a carry-on actor. Now, the Seeds of Death's a very good story. I believe it exists in its entirety and is out on DVD, so multi-region players should be able to watch it throughout the world. Space Pirates, again, missing story, which finally brings us to the end of the Troughton era with The War Games. Now, The War Games is a multi-part story. It's one of the longest ever made. Um, There is a party joke that says you can watch any episode of The War Games in any order, except for the first and the last one, and most people won't even notice. As a child, I went to a Doctor Who convention, and we found a video room where the war games was playing. Now, I'd never seen any Troughton, so I thought, I know, I'll pop in here and watch it. And as we reached, like, the third episode, I realised my whole day was being lost watching the story. So I then went back to the room and partook in the chats. But the war games is very, very long, but well worth looking, mainly because you get to see the Time Lords for the very first time. Um, You get to see the trial, the very first trial of uh, the Doctor, and you also get to see him banished to Earth. There is an argument for a season taking place between War Games and Spirit from Space. It's conjecture and something that only real fans tend to argue about. But then again, it is important. So, just to recap, the recommended stories are quite thin on the round for this Doctor because they are primarily missing. But we have Tomb of the Cybermen, the Ice Warriors, which admittedly has been recreated, the Dominators, 
The Mind Robber, The Invasion, definitely recommend that one. The Seeds of Death and The War Games. I'd like to thank you for listening to this podcast and I'll get back to you very soon. I think next podcast will be about The Runaway Bride, just in order to get us ready for the new season, which starts within the month. I'm very excited about that one, as you can tell by my tone of voice. I'd like to thank you for listening, and if you'd like to leave any co- comments or feedback, please email at me at tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. Thanks for listening. <coughs>